Well, it's a nice warm day and it seems like it's about time to get the camper out and ready to roll again. And so I was going to do a little bit of uh, maintenance and upkeep. I'd like to do a, a coolant flush this year as well. And so I did that a couple years ago and it's time to do it again. So we're going to see about doing that today. First thing I'm going to do is just start the engine and run it for a couple minutes. That way, if there's any sediment or anything inside that has settled, it uh, gets it mixed back in with the coolant. So when we drain it, it cleans it out really good. Since it's running, I'm going to go ahead and run the generator here for a couple minutes as well. There we go. Okay, now this is the fun part where you get to let the coolant actually come out. So there's several ways to do this, and we'll look at a couple different ways. But on mine, there's a drain right up in here. And if you can open that. If you run it like I have, do be careful. This is under just a little bit of pressure. And you're gonna have it probably running all over the place. So just be aware of that. Now this drain is plastic. So be careful when you're turning it. Don't turn it too hard if it's stuck. You might break it off. Let's see if I can get you a better picture of the drain here. Okay, so when you look up in there, there's the drain right there, that little uh. So this is why you want to be really careful when you're draining it because you may end up with uh, it going all the way across like this. Because it drains, on mine at least, it drains right on a cross member. Okay, we're going to take a look down inside here and just see what it looks like in there. Okay, so we're just gonna fill this up with water until it starts running out. I put my pan underneath there. We're just gonna do this until the water looks decent coming out. So this is the engine in this, uh, this is a Ford 7.5, 460. And one thing I did last time I did this was right here is where the, um, Heater hoses go to the back auxiliary heater. So when the engine's running, you can run heat into the back. And just to make sure we're all cleaned out, I like to pull both of them off and drain those out as well so that we make sure we've got as much antifreeze out of the system as we can. And then we will uh, refill it. And that is the extent of the flush. One thing you wanna do is make sure you have a, have a bucket ready down uh, underneath there. I'm gonna pop this off, slide this hose clamp off, and then I'm gonna dump it out this way. I'm gonna bring my air hose up here as well and I'm gonna gently blow through these. Now you don't wanna blow hard uh, through this system. It's a low pressure system, so you don't want 120 pounds through it. Just give it a little bit of air if you do this. And the other one, we're gonna blow it out through there as well. We're just about ready to add coolant back in. But you don't want to forget to tighten the drain on the radiator or else you'll just dump all your new coolant out on the ground. Let's not do that. I just bought this universal coolant and it is not pre-diluted. So we're going to do a gallon of this to a gallon of distilled water. And we'll do that until we're full. As you do this, listen for anything pouring out the bottom or somewhere you forgot to close something or put something back on. Okay, we're getting pretty close to pool over here. We'll go ahead and fill our reservoir here. I'm gonna fill it up to just over the cold. I'm sorry, just about halfway up to the cold with this. 
and then the rest with water. We're gonna run this for a few seconds and just kind of pump pump some of it through the system and then we'll refill some more. Here's the kind of stuff you want to watch for when you're putting it back together. Just make sure you don't have drips like this from anywhere. Keep it working. 